What are the genetics that make up the clown leopard gecko? In this video, we're gonna go through a brief history to show how we got the clown and the direction that the project is heading in. My name is Frank. This little one still needs a name, so if you do have an idea, please leave a comment below. Let's get to the video. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Okay, so the clown leopard gecko is a question that I do get asked semi-frequently, what genetics make up the clown? Now, in my initial research of leopard geckos, you might find a little bit on websites of what a clown is comprised of, but Enzo's geckos, who was actually good friends with where the original clowns came from, made a very good video that I will link in the top right corner here. I'm not gonna lie, I did study his video so that I can make sure that all of my information is up to date and correct. But let me say this, I did have a guess of what genetics made up clown before I even watched his video. And my guess was bold leopard geckos, tangerine leopard geckos, and emmerine leopard geckos. The reason for that is because if you'll look at the clown, it is comprised of dark black spotting, wonky orange pattern, and typically bright green coloration with some purple hues as well. This is just a beautiful Charmander line, super hypo, Tangerine Inferno Mandarin Tango Crush Cross, and I love this gal, I am really excited. Oh, you know what, we actually do have a name for her. Brooke, our volunteer, named her Starburst, I forgot. So you can see more pictures of Starburst and other top quality geckos that we are going to be breeding in the future on our Instagram. Also just want to take this second to shout out our sponsor, Bean Cycle Roasters, who's a specialty coffee shop in Fort Collins, Colorado, but they do have online sales and wholesale as well. Really, really good coffee. I know these guys personally and I do love their brand. By the way, if you or anybody else you know is looking for a brand sponsorship in one of our videos, go ahead and send them our way. We'll be happy to talk with them and discuss what they would like to get out of our videos. So back to the topic at hand, if you were to watch Enzo's video, which I do recommend because his video is really, really great. Basically what he goes down through is that Matt Sassobeck of Sassobeck Reptiles, before he retired, started a project called the G Project. The G Project consisted of jungle giants. Now, if you don't know what a jungle leopard gecko is, it's a leopard gecko that does not have distinct banding, but rather the back pattern of the leopard gecko is very, very wonky and chaotic, which you can really see where the clown gets its wonky and chaotic pattern from. But not only that, how do we get deep, deep oranges into the clown leopard gecko? Well, going back to the G Project, Matt Sassobeck took high quality tangerine red stripes and other tangerines from many different bloodlines and started combining them together to create what he would eventually call in 2009 the G Project, which actually stands for Gatorade based off of a commercial that he was watching at the time. It does not stand for green, even though clowns are predominantly green based and highly sought after for their green hues. So everybody assumed that the G meant green, but in reality it means Gatorade, which is still kind of green because Gatorade's very like neon colors, like neon blue, neon red, neon yellow. And when you combine all of that, it's not too far off from green. Now, Matt had this one leopard gecko that he called CT. CT was one of his finest productions of the G project. It had a beautiful 90%, maybe even 95% carrot tail. It had really good contrast and it was exactly the ingredients that he was looking for to continue on the G project. He then mixed CT with white and yellows and bold stripes. Both white and yellows and bold stripes are known to carry high amounts of green coloration in the leopard gecko. And this is really where the clown derived from. It derived out of that G project, which again started with jungle giants crossed with 
high quality tangerine red stripes and other tangerine lines. Also crossed into some of Ron Tremper's emerine geckos, which emerine is a fancy word for green, which led to CT, his star studded male. And then CT was crossed into white and yellow and also bold stripes and bold bandits, which is where they would get their dark, dark patterning from. I would need Matt to speak to this, but I tried to find the video where I saw him say this. In his older videos, he used to mention how he would cross the tangerine bloodlines with the Afghanicus bloodline. And there was a theory of mine that maybe Clown had some tie into Afghanicus because of their really, really bold spotting and bold patterning in Clowns. And Afghanicuses have really, really bold spotting and bold patterning. But I don't know that to be true until I find evidence of that to be true. It's just a theory of mine. Another theory of mine is that bold stripes and bold bandits and Halloween masks all came from Afghanicus blood anyway. So if Afghanicus blood is in the bold stripe, then technically Afghanicus blood would also be in the clown. Now in 2011, when Matt retired, a man named Hunter Manley of Manley's Geckos took over the clown collection of Matt. Hunter, who also has a YouTube channel, so you could check him out at Manly Geckos, but I really haven't seen him post anything recently, so I don't know, I have to see if he's still really active on it, but he does have a lot of good older videos that I used to watch of his when I was first studying leopard geckos in like 2016, 2017. So I'm pretty sure those videos are still out there. So now Hunter took this clown, which is essentially a jungle giant, tangerine, emerine, white and yellow, bold stripe, bloodline mixed gecko, and he mixed it into more tangerines. He mixed it into the blood emerines, which blood is just another word for a tangerine line that somebody named. And then emerine, of course, we discussed is just a word for green. So again, he mixed it to more tangerine and green bloodlines and also rainbow red stripe, which I'd have to do a little bit more research on the exact origins of rainbow red stripe, but I believe that it's geckos, etc. If like its name states, it's just another red stripe line, all that means is that it's a high quality tangerine line. So it's good quality tangerines that have these two bright red stripes straddling the mid dorsal of the gecko's back, which throws a lot of really, really bright orangey red kind of hues into the gecko's back. Another red stripe, which is not as bright is the line bread red stripe, which has two orange stripes down more of the shoulder blades of the gecko with a thick mid stripe going down the back that is empty or void of pattern. I will discuss this in another video because it's really two different color tone palettes just overlapping in a certain way. For example, the bold stripes that you actually see on bold stripe leopard geckos, those black stripes, those are decals. Think of those as like stickers on top of a race car. They are independent of the orange or yellow or green color that's going on on the gecko. They do their own thing. It's like putting a sticker on a notebook. If the notebook is blue and you put the sticker onto the notebook, the notebook is still blue, but you just put a sticker onto it to give it a different look. Very similar to the bold stripe leopard gecko. Those stripes are like stickers, but the red stripe leopard gecko that is line bred that has those orange stripes, it's really a two-toned color notebook. It would be as if your notebook had two color shades of pattern, one on top of the other. And because one is showing color in one area and the other is showing color in another area, it gives it this two-tone kind of look. So we'll cover that in a future video more in detail. And then the last bloodline that he mixed in there was Inferno. My favorite tangerine bloodline is Inferno, Mandarin, and Tango Crush. So that's why we're working with all of that over here. But Inferno is just a really, really great bloodline line for brightening up the orange tones on the leopard gecko. It's one of the most popular leopard gecko morphs that you'll see in the albino version, but clowns do not come in albino version because if they did, it would take away everything that makes it a clown, which is all of that contrast. Now in a recent interview, I believe it was Evan and John from Gecko Boa that was talking. I tried to rewatch this video and I couldn't find the part where they mentioned this. So maybe it was a different video. It might have been Brian Barcheck and Matt Sasselbeck talking on Snake Talk podcast on YouTube. Matt mentioned how he's not that fond of the clown name anymore, which is funny because he's making a comeback into the hobby and I think it's more of a marketing play. So what happens yesterday, the day before I filmed this video, if you check out his Instagram, he releases the clown 2.0, which is actually now named 
the Joker. Essentially, all it is is a clown leopard gecko mixed with other genetics, which is okay, but I think that he really named it that to see if he can get a marketing edge coming back into the hobby because he's been gone for so long. He's been gone for almost 15 years now. And that's a whole nother topic to talk about. I really have nothing personally against Matt because he's never done anything to me. A matter of fact, I've learned a ton from his videos. All of my videos and the information that I share with you guys comes from personal experience and also the experience of Matt Sassobeck and other YouTubers and other online sources of information that I have learned from. But Matt was a big, big source of that information. I know there's a little controversy around when he left the hobby and a few people that got the short end of the stick as he was leaving and maybe some bad business deals went south. And I apologize for that, but I am a little bit of a fanboy of Matt because he was the guy that I looked up to coming into the hobby. So just from that perspective alone, I give him a lot of kudos and a lot of respect for teaching me a lot of what I know today. Now, one final remark about Clown. Do I work with Clown? The answer is no, because similar to what Matt just said and showed in his Instagram release photo with the new Joker line, Clown is just simply a combination of the best greens, the best oranges, and the best jungles all mixed together in one selectively line bred over the years for top, top quality. So you have two options if you wanna make a clown. You could go to Hunter Manly, Bubba's Geckos, Tucson's Finest Leos, even Junior's Leos, I believe. A lot of these guys are good friends of mine and they all really, really love and focus on the clown. So if you buy a gecko from them that is already a clown, you're gonna be well on your way to producing your own clowns. However, the route that I have taken is, I call it the ingredient route. I want all the ingredients to make a clown so I can make my own line. Not so that I can have the pride to name my own line, but as a creator, you know, Geeky Gecko Creations, my goal is to create something different, something never seen, something top quality. And so to do that, what I am doing is I'm taking the best of the best tangerines that I produce or that I can buy and I'm breeding them all together to create the best of the best tangerines. Then I'm doing the same thing with emmerines, taking the best of the best white and yellow emmerines, which is basically green, white, and yellows, and combining them together to create the best of the best white and yellow emmerines. Now, white and yellow, emmerine, and bold stripe all kind of tie in in our collection. So I've been breeding white and yellow, emmerine, and bold stripe all together so that all I need to do one day is take the best of the tangerines that I have, breed it into the best of the white and yellow, emmerine, bold stripes that I have, and bam, out is going to pop some clown-like animals. Now, other big breeders have supported this practice of creating your own clowns per se, such as John from Gecko Boa. He mentioned in an interview with Evan in Strength and Leos recently that his clown stuff flies off of the shelves, sells like there's no tomorrow, but it's not as good quality as some of his other stuff that is not named that doesn't sell as well or as easy. And so he was kind enough to give us his honest feedback that sometimes people get too caught up in a name. So don't get so caught up in a name because you could have a really, really bad expression of a clown and you could have a really, really good expression of a tangerine, bold stripe, jungle, white and yellow, emmerine, which is basically a clown mix, and you might not choose the better option because you're so focused on the name. So there are a lot of really, really good clowns out there, but don't focus on the name. It's the same with Black Knight. If you buy a Black Knight that looks yellow, you're going to produce yellow babies. But if you buy a gecko that's called, let's say, Night Fury, but it's pitch black. You stand a much greater chance of producing pitch black geckos because of what this gecko looks like. Always go on sight first and then genetics second. Also, Gary Orner of Orner's Exotics has claimed in his podcast that he does have animals that are very clown-like very similar to clown, if not better than the clowns that are out there that he sees right now. But because they're not named clown, people think that they're not as good as clown. So just remember, clown is 
just a name. Look at this little one right here, just kind of sideways headed like that, looking at you guys. All right, so what did you think about this video, guys? Did you learn a little bit more about clown in this video? Let me know if there was any questions that I did not cover for you guys, and I will answer them in a comment below. Also, keep an eye out for future videos because we are doing a lot more videos now than we were last year, and that is my goal is to continue to produce great content that you guys are interested in. So to do that, let me know what you're interested in. Leave a comment below with suggestions for video ideas because I write them all down and I have a big list in my room that I keep track of and when the time is right, I get to every single one of those videos as much as I can. So Frank and Starburst signing off over here. Have a geeky gecko great day and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.